Hi everybody and welcome back to Aaron's Tech Review and Tips and today we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about my Raspberry Pi water-cooled project. Now this is a Raspberry Pi 2 that is overclocked to 1050 megahertz and running at 3 volts. Now I'm going to show you a couple things in this video to kind of maybe help you do that with your Raspberry Pi. Now this isn't the an official project update of the Raspberry Pi. You can find that in uh, other videos that I have. Uh, you can subscribe at the button right up on top here. And uh, please thumbs up or thumbs down to what you think. Now, without any further ado, let's get back to the meat and potatoes of what we're doing. Now, right now, you're looking at my Windows desktop. And I'm going to do something here and connect to my Raspberry Pi. Hey, Cortana, please open remote desktop. Okay, starting remote desktop connection. And there we go. So I clicked on it. Now, I didn't show you guys how where to find the address yet. And I'll, find, I'll show you that as soon as we log in. But I'm going to log in, and you're going to need this. So this is the default password for your Raspberry Pi LAN connection or your, your uh, remote desktop connection. It is lowercase pi tab, and then it's going to be raspberry, all lowercase and then click OK. So it's going to come over here and it's going to do your connection log. Okay, you're going to see your screen go a little bit like this and then you're going to see your desktop or whatever your Raspberry Pi appear. And there it is. So now you see two X's, I move it and I get one X. Now I'm connected to it. Now my Raspberry Pi is still working on whatever it's doing over here and and uh, it doesn't even know I'm there. So, you know, I can actually do two different things at once with my Raspberry Pi. Uh, dividing the cores up, since it is a four core, the Raspberry Pi 2 is a four core system, it does uh, split the, the jobs up between those cores. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the temperature of this 1050 megahertz overclocked at three volt system. And I'm running at a very cool, uh, just went to 39 degrees, on the uh, Celsius and uh, 2930 and it's been running all day uh, usually it sits about 26 degrees um, and I've gotten a little crazy sometimes and I've actually iced it down to get it a little colder than that just to see if I can improve the overclocking well I found this was the most stable so um, most uh, power supplies will be able to do this overclock really easily so there shouldn't be any problems for you guys to do that now I'm going to show you here, it should be in resting mode, there's a little brick. Now if you haven't added this to your, your widget line on your, on your uh, Raspberry Pi, go ahead and do that. And, uh, but for, the, for now, let's just look at mine. Right now you're seeing it at 600 megahertz. And at 600 megahertz, that's its resting. So it's not really pushing the CPU at all to have both these screens going at the same time. So that's really a nice thing to have. I mean, they, they, the Raspberry organization did a very good job of designing this board and giving you a pretty powerful little computer. Um, sure, it's not a Pentium 7 um, DDR4 uh, system, but you know, that's not why we bought it. We bought it because we wanted to tinker with something that uh, is affordable, you know? So if we do fry the damn thing, then it's not gonna be a problem to get it replaced if you can find one. I mean, they're, they're quite, quite tough to actually get a hold of. You can pay a little bit more on YouTube to get it, but eh, who cares about that? So right now we're gonna stress this out a little bit. I'm gonna show you that it is overclocked past the factory authorization. So I'm gonna go to my web browser. I don't think you guys can see it because it's over on the side. Bam, do you see how fast that popped? I mean, that was quick. So, and again, it's actually running the same web browser on the other side. So I've actually got two web browsers going at the same time. So pretty cool there. Again, that's the power of this Raspberry Pi 2. And you can see it's loading fairly quickly. Not a problem, no issues. I'm gonna go to my channel because it's my web video. I'm gonna go to my web channel, of course. So there it is, you see it's loading very quickly. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And give me questions and comments and I'll try to reply them. When you guys send me in directions I don't think I would normally go. And uh, I enjoy learning from uh, your questions. So please add questions and uh, subscribe. Also thumbs up or thumbs down the videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
put play one of my videos to show you guys that it is uh, running pretty damn hard. Um, I'm at full screen mode, again, between the two. And I, again, I'm streaming this, so you should see it's going to be looking a little funky here. It is the Raspberry Pi. But there you go. I've got it running on the other side, too. So let me go. Let me just close that over on the other one because it is taking a lot of the bandwidth up on that. So, but uh, that's funny. I'm streaming, streaming, streaming. That's kind of funny. So... I'm going to close that. But it jumped to 36 degrees, 35 degrees very quickly. So if you do not have a water-cooled system to ramp this thing up, please do not take your Raspberry Pi above the factory overclocking um, or you will burn it up. And, uh, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to have fun with it before you, you destroy it. But uh, it went right back down to 31 degrees Celsius as soon as I dropped the load on that. And I'm going to show you how to do this. It's real simple. I'm going to open up terminal, terminal and I'm going to type sudo nano space backslash boot backslash config dot txt. Okay, and it's gonna pop it. Up. It's gonna pop it up, and you guys will be able to see. Now I'm not gonna go full screen with this, just because because my picture right here, you guys wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna kind of maximize it a little bit up in the corner here, so that you can see. Now you're gonna see all this stuff over here on the side, and don't kind of worry about that right now. Okay, just take your cursor, run down a little bit here. Okay, you can actually go all the way to the end. And this is the part that you're going to want to go. You're going to go right back up. You're going to find this line right here. It's going to be there. It's going to say arm uh, dash or underline uh, frequency equals 150. Uh, that's where I've set my clock for my CPU. And uh, you can see the default is 700. I don't like that. Um, so I kind of went a little above and beyond. But you're going to have to do one other thing because when you when you increase the frequency that you're asking that CPU to do, you need to add a little bit of more voltage to it to do it. Um, oh, I guess I moved it to four. I'm sorry, I moved it to four volts instead of three. So, yeah, it is what it is. But uh, that's that's quite a bit. Um, so if your power supply can't do that, please get a power supply that can do it before you chimp any of this. And if I can go in, and let's go back up here. I can come up here, come over, and I can change that to 100. Now, I did. I'm going to go Control X. Okay. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'm going to say yes. Okay. And then it's going to ask me file name to write to. Now, you have to do this and just go Enter. Okay. There you go. Now, you would reboot and your system would then allow you to have an overclock system. Now remember, don't try this unless you have somehow cooled that CPU, the GPU, and the memory. If you haven't, then uh, you can very, very easily blow your system. You don't want to do that. So uh, don't recommending, recommend you do that. Now for remote desktop, it's even simpler. Okay, we're going to come over to the menu we're going to system tools, uh, no pref preferences, yeah, preferences. We're going to go to right Raspberry Pi config. We're going to go to interfaces and you're going to come down to SSH and you're going to click enable. Okay. Very simple. And then click OK. Okay. And now you're going to run down here. You're going to find out what your address is to your little Raspberry Pi. Mine is 10.0.0.200. If you can see over here, guys, follow my cursor. I went over the top of the computers, the two talking computers, and up it popped. Very top. Don't worry about the slash 24. You don't need to add that. Um, but you will see what it is configured for you. So you can use your Windows system to actually interact with your Raspberry Pi, even if you don't have a monitor. Uh, let me stress that. Even if you don't have a monitor, by using this method, you're going to be able to have one monitor 
that will access two systems. Now I can come in here and say, I want to get out of my Raspberry Pi because I'm in dead remote desktop. I can minimize it. Away it goes. Say, oh man, I want to go to, uh, I want to go to YouTube. So I'm going to go to YouTube on my Windows system. There we go. I'm now on YouTube on my Windows system. Come over here. Let's go here. But, oh, what's going on with my Raspberry Pi? There it is. I'm back. Okay? It's just that simple, guys. So the Raspberry Pi is a great and powerful tool. And with some work and some, some knowledge, you can actually begin to do quite a, quite a few things that are a lot more fun than a Windows-based system. This thing is amazing, and you really need to, if you're on the fence or just got one, uh, start tinkering with it. So that's it. Again, thumbs up or thumbs down if you like this video. And uh, please subscribe and uh, ask me questions. I'll reply back to you. Until next time, this is Aaron's Tech Review and Tips, and I'm out of here. Have a great one, guys. No, oh, I can't. Well, look at that. I can't leave yet. Now I can leave because I'm outside of the, the window. Have a great one, guys. See you later. Bye.